happening. Now, I know some of you guys came in a little late. There were some issues with um, entering the Zoom meeting in general, but don't worry, we're just gonna <laughs> go through. Um, I do need, give me a second, <laughs> I have some students and teams that are having some problems. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So who wants to tell me what they got for the first, <clears throat> the first example? You guys can write it in the chat. What'd you get, Francesca? Um, that was the lady. Oh, the lady, what did you get? I got eight pole with the eight. Eight point fifty eight? Yes. Okay. So let's see. I have someone else saying an eight point five. And we'll go I ahead got and four. I got four point five. And another 8.5, I have a 4.5. So let's go ahead and solve it because we got a bunch of different answers and let's see what we get, okay? So our first step, five times five, or five times seven is 35. So I put my five down here and I carry my three. Five times one is gonna be just one, plus that three, it's gonna give me eight. Now I have how many decimals? Yes. One. I have one. So I'm going to bring my decimal. Remember, my decimal is always at the end. And I'm going to move it over one. So my Miss, final I answer. Can't hear you. You guys can't hear me, or is it just Emily who can't hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. So Man, who was saying? I had 8.5. It's just that I solved. Five plus three, and they got me eight, and I was like, oh, never mind. Ah. <laughs> so we got to be careful. Someone said they couldn't hear me. So who said they couldn't hear me? I guess not. I guess Are they going to answer a question if they can hear you? I, well, they, they said it before. So maybe if they see me talking, they think, oh, well. I still don't know what she's saying. Allison, can you hear me now? And let me type that in. <laughs> okay, so she can't hear me. All right, awesome. Okay. See, Emily, she did hear me. So my okay. plan worked. My plan worked. All right. So the next one, we have 2.4. Put in the chat what you got if you were able to, to work on it and me. weren't having technical difficulties. Me. You want to solve it, Emily? Yes. Okay. All right, so how do I solve it? Okay, so you multiply four. Oh, wait, never mind. Hold up. Hold up. Wait, wait, hold up. Let me, let me check that I got it right. <laughs> well, we haven't solved it, so how can you check that you got it right? Are you putting it in a calculator? Don't put it in a calculator, Emily. I'm going to have to call on someone else. I didn't get it right. Oops. All right. Well, let's work it out together. Four times eight. What is that? 32. 32. It is 32. So I'm going to put my two down here. And I'm going to carry my three. And then eight times two is? 16. 16. 16 plus that three. So 16, 17, 18, 19. 19.2. So 19.2. I only have one decimal. So my decimal point is going to come over here. So I heard someone say 19.2. That is my final answer. Oh, wait, I did get it right. You did get it right, Emily? Yeah. Why did you think you didn't? I don't know. I type too fast in the calculator. Oh, we're using the calculator. 
don't to check only, only, only to check. Yeah, but it's fine if you don't, even if you don't have it right, it's better to work it out because maybe someone else did the same mistake and then they don't know. So don't feel bad if you ever get the wrong problem. Remember, we're all learning together, except for me because I am old and know how to do these things. But you guys are all learning together and it's fine to, to make mistakes when you're learning together, okay? So the next one we have, who wants, write in the chat what we got for this one. The next one is, see, Francesca said this one was hard. So we have, I got one answer. I'm going to write it up here in the corner. You guys write in what you got. And then we're going to see. So I have a couple. So these have been the only two answers so far. I've had several people answer, but these are the two. Don't worry about getting it wrong right now. Okay. I know I am too. Oh, so in case you guys haven't been to my Zoom meetings this week since or since we started doing our lessons, um, I am in the meeting twice. I am in the meeting twice because I use the regular computer so I can talk to you all. And then I also have the iPad so that I can write. Right? Doesn't my handwriting look suspiciously very neat <laughs> for doing math on a computer? If it was me on the mouse pad, no, it would not work. It would not work. You guys would not know what I was writing. So that's why I'm on here twice, but don't worry. So let's go ahead and solve it. A lot of people are doubting their answers. So let's go ahead and solve it so we figure it out. We have five times eight, which is... 40. I'm going to carry the 4. 5 times 9 is 45. So I'm going to have 45 plus that 4, which is going to equal 49. And then I have 5 times 1, which is just 5, right? Plus that 4 up here. That's going to give me 9 again. And then 5 times 0, just 0. And 5 times 0, just 0 again. Okay, I see some people changing their, their answers in the chat. And you guys, when you type in the chat, if you are worried about it being wrong, don't worry. I currently have the chat set up so you only message me. So only I am the one who sees the, the answers. So there's no need to be embarrassed if you put the wrong answer in and all that stuff. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and do the second part. What's the first thing I need to do? Add the zero. Add the zero. I need to put in the zero. Remember, when I'm multiplying a double digit, I need to always put in a zero the next row. Okay, so on my next row, I put in that zero, and now I can multiply. So seven times eight, who can tell me what that one is? Fifty-seven. Fifty-six. Practice your times tables. You'll be much more confident. I kind of okay. forgot. Oh. <laughs> don't, forget your, don't forget your times tables. So now, seven times nine. 63. 63. Yeah. Plus that five is going to give me 68. I'm going to carry my six over. And then seven times one. This is, should be an easy one. Seven. What is seven? Seven. All right, and then I have that plus six, and that's going to give me 13. My last step is seven times zero, which is just zero, but I have that plus one. So I'm going to put my one there, and then I'm going to put my zero. All right, so now I'm going to add everything up together. Zero plus zero is just zero. Did I do that right? No. Why does it look wrong to me? Uh, five times eight is 40. That's right. No, it, yeah. It, I guess it's a zero. It looks That's weird not what I got. We're all doing the same problem? Give me one second. I'm going to check this out. 
continue the recording right after I had to take that break. So nine plus six is 15. So I'm putting my five there, I carry my one. I'm gonna do nine plus eight, or what I prefer is one plus nine, which is 10. And then, oh, I see, I see why. You guys aren't totally wrong, okay? So don't feel so bad about it, okay? So one plus nine is 10, 10 plus eight is 18. And then I have three plus one, which is four, one plus zero, which is one, and then that's zero there, okay? So we have one, oh, that's, that's two and one. One, two, three, four numbers after the decimal, okay? So then when I do, I have my decimal back here, one, two, Three, four. Oh my God, I got it right. Oh, it is right. Oh, you know why it looks so weird? Because I was <laughs> trying zero. to compare. Oh, yeah. Does that zero at the end matter? Nope. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. I have been so used to seeing that zero through all my other periods that when, I, when you guys gave me those answers, it didn't, something looked odd. That's why I was very confused. I remembered the eight, I remember the five, but the rest of it was all blurry. So that's why this answer is the same as this answer, right? If I have a dollar and 50 cents, I can also write it that I have a dollar and 50 cents, yes? Those two amounts are the same. They're equal to each other. That's not a sad face, it's an equal sign. Yes? Okay. Yes. We get it? So you guys were not yes. wrong. Yes. It's just that those zeros don't count when they're at the end. Right? They're just like little holders, little placeholders. Okay? But yes, so if you got this one, you are correct. All right. The last problem in our bell ringer. Use the product of 123 times 47 to find the product of 123 times 0 0.47. Explain the difference in the two products. So before I start, who can tell me the difference between those two products? It's kind of obvious. There's no zero and there's no decimal point. So the main one is there's gonna be a decimal point in the middle of my answer for that second one, okay? So, but what it's telling you is basically what we have been doing, right? Do the multiplication first, and then worry about placing the decimal afterwards. So yeah. in this case, we do 123 times 47, okay? I do seven times three, which is 21. I'm gonna put my one down here and carry my two. I'm gonna draw my little line so I know what I'm multiplying. Seven times two is 14, plus two is 16. Carry that one over. And then seven times one is just seven, plus that extra one is eight. eight. Okay, now I'm gonna put my zero and I'm gonna do it in a different color. Now, four times three, that's just 12. I'm gonna carry my one over. Four times two is eight, plus one is nine, and then four times one is just four. Now I'm gonna add it all together. I don't have a lot of room, so I'm gonna move my addition up here. So one plus zero. One. One. Six plus two. Eight. Eight, eight plus nine. Seventeen. We slowed down on that one. <laughs> I carry, carry my one, four plus one. Five. And I see the answers in there. So. Right now I have 5,781. That is the amount of 123 times 47. I am recording, so don't worry about it. It is being recorded. I do see that it is recording. So now I have 0 0.47. So Allison already wrote in the answer because she went ahead. So I have two decimal places after my decimal in the second one, in the 123 times 0 0.47. That means I'm gonna put my decimal two spots in. So at 
57.81. Do we see that? So we see that it's basically what we have been doing, only it's telling you, look, it's basically just telling you, yeah, you can do this. So yes. if we couldn't, we would have been in bad shape. <laughs> That's what we've been doing. All right. So any questions on these bell ringers? No. Nope. No, we're all good. All yep. right. So in case you guys can't guess, today we are doing decimals by decimals. Don't give me that face, Allison. It's fun. Yay. Okay, I saw the the, oh, the face. See, I'm seeing it right now. All right. Oops, I forgot to erase this. Okay. So the first thing is, number one, this is the same thing that we have been doing. The only difference is, remember I told you guys, when you multiply by the decimals, you have to count how many numbers are after a decimal point in the problem. The last one that we were doing was like 3.6 times 5. There was only one number after a decimal, and only one part of the problem had a decimal point. In this case, we now have two. So... For this first one, go ahead and tell me how many times I'll have to move my decimal point at the end. Two. Two times. One time, zero times, three times. So remember, we have to count in the whole problem. One, two, three. So we have to move our decimal three spots, okay? Now, I'm going to fix up my problem because I don't like the way it looks and I don't know why I wrote it that way, but I did. So, can I do this? Can I flip my numbers? Yes, no, yes. Yes, I can, why? Because it's multiplication. So remember, when it's multiplication or addition, the order does not matter, okay? So you can put whichever order you want and it'll come out the same answer, all right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and start my multiplication. So I'm gonna do six times five, which is? 30. 30, so I put my zero down there. I'm gonna carry my three. Six times zero is? Zero. Plus that three? Three. And then once again, I'm gonna have six times zero. Zero. So it's just zero again. Okay. Now I'm gonna put my plus sign already and I'm gonna go ahead and do my multiplication. So three times five? You, for you forgot the zero? I did forget the zero. And I forgot to change my color again. I'm always forgetting that one. All right, so I put my zero in. And now I'm gonna go ahead and now three times five is what? 15. 15. I see Allison <laughs> is uh, spamming the chat. Only I can see it and it's very funny. She sent 15 like three times. All right, <laughs> three times zero. Zero. Plus one. One. It's just that one. And then three times zero again is just zero. So now when I add it up, zero plus zero is just zero. Three eight. plus five is eight. Zero plus one. One. It's just one, and then I'm bringing my zero down. Now I already said I had three decimal places, so I'm gonna go ahead, remember I start all the way back here. I'm gonna do one, two, and three. So my final answer is zero point eighteen. Yes. Okay. Now, does it matter if I wrote 0 0.18 or 0. Point that? No. No. Same answers. I love math as well, Allison. All right. Next one. Same thing. <laughs> Same thing that we've been doing. Two times two. It's just four. This one is a little bit easier, right? Because I have two ones and anything times one is just itself. So that's gonna stay a two and that's one's a two and there's a zero. So once again, 
I'm going to put my zero in there. And now I'm going to multiply. So seven times two, 14. I carry my one. Then I have seven times one, which is just seven, but I have this plus one here. So that's going to give me an eight. I'm going to do seven times one, one more time. And then zero. Now I'm going to add it all up. And I have four plus zero is just four. Four plus two is six. Oop. And then two plus eight is going to give me 10. But I'm going to have to put my zero down there and carry my one. Okay, then that's going to be eight. And then a zero again. Now I have how many decimal places? Two. Three. Four. <laughs> so it is four. What? One, two, three, four. Remember, you guys got to practice that. Practice counting them all. I'm going to start back here. One, two, three, and four. So my final answer is this. Now, does my zero in here count? Nope. No? So I can write, this is going to be the same as, as that? Oh, yeah, actually, I thought you were talking about that, that zero in the first. Yeah, so remember, yeah. if there are numbers on either side of the zero, that zero is important. You cannot get rid of that one, OK? So this is my final answer. All right. And I, I always say this is the last problem, but it's not. It's the last problem that looks like this. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. So 7 times 4 is 28. So I put my 8 down there and I carry my 2. 4 times 6 is 24 plus 2 more is 26. So six down there, carry my two. And then four times zero is zero plus two. Two. Gives me two. And then four times zero, which is just zero. Then I'm gonna go ahead, once again, add in my zero. And this one is really easy because it's one times everything. So literally everything is gonna be copied exactly as it's written there. So a seven, a six, a zero, and one more zero. Now I'm going to add it all up together. 8 plus 0 is 8. 6 plus 7 is 13. Carry my 1. So 1 plus 2 is 3. And then 3 plus 6 gives me 9. 0 and 0 is 0. And once again, another 0. Now, how many decimal places Four. do I have? 4. Four. 1. Two, three, four. So I'm going to go ahead and put my decimal all the way at the end. One, two, three, and four. So my final answer is 0 0.0938. Yes? Yes. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you guys understand. Yes. The lesson so far. Thumbs up. Good. All right. So the last problem. A car can travel 28.45 miles. Remember, this is a word problem, so I want to highlight, underline, circle, whatever I need to do for those numbers. All right. A car can travel 28.45 miles with one gallon of gas. The gasoline tank can hold 11.5 gallons. How many miles can this car travel on a full tank of gas? Is this addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? Um, multiplication. So it is multiplication, right? We are multiplying decimals, so it makes sense. Um, and the other thing to keep in mind, so in another period, they said, how many miles? Well, 
and they were saying subtraction. So remember I told you guys when it says something like how many more miles or how much more uh, miles, I, I don't think that's proper English, but it has to have that comparison. How many more, how much more, okay? If it doesn't have that comparison, then it doesn't work, okay? It's not gonna be subtraction. When it is how many, it's a total. So that means that it's going to be in all, okay? Now, who can tell me what two numbers we're gonna multiply? This one is a little easy, right? So there's not too many numbers. 28.45 and 11.5. Yes, so 28.45 and 11.5, all right? Conveniently, I have it already written out on another slide because when I tried to solve it the other day on that little piece, it did not work out. I ran out of space. So I'm going to do the first part, which is the five. So five times five is 25. So I put my five at the bottom and I carry my two. Five times four is 20. 20 plus two is 22. 22. So I'm going to put my two at the bottom, carry my plus two over. Five times eight is going to be 40, plus that two is 42. And then five times two is going to be 10. And then once you get to the 10, you add four. So it's going to be 14, okay? So, all we've done so far is just multiply the five to all of our spots. Five times five was 25, so I have to write the five down here and carry my two. Five times four was 20, plus two again. So it gave me 22, which again, I put only my two down at the bottom and do a plus two in the top. And then eight times five, which is 40, plus two more is 42. So once more, two at the bottom, plus four in the top. And then five times two is 10. Um, yes, Francesca. And then five times two is 10 plus four. All right. So now I have to put in my zero because I have to do the next number. All right, so I'm gonna do my zero and then I'm gonna do the same thing. This one is a little easier because it's one times everything, okay? So it's gonna be one times five, one times four, one times eight, and one times two, which since everything is just being multiplied by one, it's going to stay exactly the same. So I'm gonna write five, four, eight, two okay now i have one more number to do what am i going to do before i multiply that last one add a zero so i'm just going to add one zero two zeros i'm going to write in two zeros so remember that when you multiply the more digits you have up on the top you're going to add a zero so in this case i didn't have any so this was no zeros, and now it became a plus one zero. Then I go ahead and I'm gonna add another zero. So I go from zero, right, none, to one, to two, okay? And then it's gonna be the same thing, right? Because it's one times five, one times four, one times eight, and one times two. So nothing is going to change there. So five, four, eight, and my two over here. Now I'm going to add everything up together. Five plus zero plus zero is going to give me just five. And then two plus five plus zero, so five plus two is seven. Two plus four plus five, so two plus four is six. And then six plus five is 11. I carry my one. Now in this case, so when it comes to adding a bunch of numbers 
um, when they're all on top of each other, it can look a little intimidating and you might get confused. What I would recommend is adding things that you know for a fact and then adding them later on to make it a little easier. So if that's a little confusing what I just said, um, I'm gonna explain it right now. So I know four plus four is eight, okay? I know eight plus eight is 16, right? So then 16 plus one is 17. I think that's a bit easier than having to do four plus eight and then plus four again, okay? You wanna kind of use what you know. So now the last one, same kind of thing. I like doing eight plus two because that gives me 10. 10 plus one is 11 and then plus one more is gonna be 12. Then I have one more up here and one plus two is three. Now, how many decimal places do I have? Three. Three. Let's see, one, two, three. So I have three decimal places. So I'm starting all the way back here. I'm gonna go one, two, three. So my final answer is 327.175 miles. So that's how far the car can drive on a full tank of gas. Yes. When you add eight plus two plus one, you put 12 instead of 11. Where did I do that? Um, M, where it says eight plus two plus one. Ah, because it's eight plus two plus one plus one. Remember this one over here equaled 17. So I had to carry my one. So then eight plus two is 10 plus one more is 11, plus that last one gives me 12. Um, Miss? Yes. The, thing, the multiplying thing looks like a adding signal. Where? Oh, I did do that. Look at that. Excuse me, what? That's what we were talking about, right? That it was, mul or I accidentally wrote a plus sign. Ah, oh, you know it was multiplying. We already know we're multiplying today. So, but thank you for catching that for me. So I fixed that up. Um, if you guys were uh, late, I don't, I know I kept hearing some chiming, which I know that it's people joining the meetings. Please keep in mind, I do record these. So I will post up the video um, on the YouTube channel and I will submit, uh, send you the link on Teams later today, okay? So we are done with this. Any questions on multiplying decimals by decimals? Mm, no. No, we're all good? All right, so a couple of announcements, things to go over. I used to, I kind of messed up when I wrote this, this uh, a little while, like yesterday. Um, so ignore all that part, that's all messed up, so don't worry about that. Khan Academy, so we are going to start doing Khan Academy. I don't know if I mentioned it to your period, I mentioned it to a period, I can't remember which one, um, but we are going to start using Khan Academy to do um, assignments. So for example, this week, you will not have any paper handout worksheets or whatever that you need to do. You do not have to do any of those, okay? What you are going to do, um, and some of you guys might have used Khan Academy before, which is awesome. Um, basically, it's going to be like a lesson. So what I'm gonna do is, um, your assignment for today is three lessons. So it's three assignments. The first one is just a, like a six or seven minute video. And then you have two um, sets of exercises. In total, it is only 14 questions. So give me that face, Allison. See that face. Okay, it is only 14 questions. It's not that bad. It's all on multiplying decimals like we were just doing today. Okay, so. We have to do it today? So. It is due on Sunday. However, keep in mind. Can you that, repeat that please? Yes, I'm going to repeat it. Your Khan Academy lessons will be due on Sundays. Okay, so whenever I assign them, they will always be due on Sunday. But keep in mind that you are going to get Khan Academy lessons assigned on Thursday as well. So even though the work that I assigned today pretty much will probably be about half an hour for you guys to do. So keep in mind, you can just do half an hour today and not have to worry about it and maybe do half an hour on Thursday, depending on how many lessons you get that day. Um, 
or you can procrastinate and have like five hours of Khan Academy to do on Sunday. Don't do that to yourself. It's going to stress you out. Just do the 30 minutes now. You guys have plenty of time because um, after I go over these quick little announcements, we're going to do a quizzes activity and then you guys are done for the day. Okay. So Khan Academy, I am making you guys accounts. If you already have an account and you remember your information, please let me know. I will not make an account for you. You can just use your own. Um, but I had a lot of issues in my first period with people signing up for Khan Academy. So um, I will send it to you. You guys can just go to khanacademy.com and log in with the username and password that I am going to give you. Or you can actually uh, access it through your student portal. So when you go onto your student portal, there's a section called like apps, services, and sites. And when you click that, it's going to show you a whole list of a bunch of um, websites that you get for free because of being a student. So in that list, you will see the Khan Academy link. Okay. Um, but you can just Google it. I think Googling it is easy as well. So um, that's number one. Number two is we are for the homework. There are three ways to turn in homework to me. Number one is the Dropbox. So the Dropbox, um, I post the link on Teams. You click it, upload your assignment. That's it. You do not need a, a username or password. You don't need an account in Dropbox. Um, it doesn't ask you for anything special. Uh, that is the one that I am most comfortable with because if I click on the link, I see exactly what you guys see. When it comes to submitting assignments on Teams, I know it is possible. I do not know how you guys do that. Um, I don't think I have um, access to see how you guys see the, the portal and how it works for you. I can find it. So if you submit it on Teams and tell me, Ms. Perdomo, I submitted my homework on Teams, I know how to get to it. I just don't know what are the steps to uploading it, okay? And the third option is through email. You can send me an email with the pictures of your assignment attached and I will get it. Um, keep in mind, all of these options are timestamped. So when you guys submit it to me, I know exactly when you submitted it. If it was late, if it was on time, if it was at 11.59, 59 seconds before midnight, I will know and, um, you know, keep that in mind. For your assignments that you have gotten from last week, I will give an extension that you guys can turn them in. Please turn them in to me. Otherwise, I have to put in zeros. I've already started putting in zeros and it's not fun, okay? Make sure that you do both of your flip grids. I haven't put the flip grid for this week, but I'm going to do that today. Um, one flip grid video is enough. It does not have to be very long, okay? It doesn't have to, don't worry too much about not getting a good grade on your flip grid. If you just answer the prompt and the topic that I give you, you're fine, okay? But you don't, you don't need to send me uh, or, or make stress out and send five videos because we don't know what we're doing, okay? One is good. Take it easy. Don't think too much about it, okay? Are there, and then the last thing, I almost forgot. iReady testing. So this week, you guys should be working on your reading iReady um, in your English classes. Next week, we do our math one, okay? So please um, take that into account. Take it seriously. Get some good rest on Sunday, um, and there is no new lessons next week. It's just I ready all week. Okay. Any other questions? Wait, when's I ready um, testing? You guys should be doing your I ready testing for reading this week. And then next week we do math. Okay, so we don't have to do. Uh, I ready today. I'm going to stop the recording because we are done. That